As we have seen in our previous videos, quinoa is distinguished for two main attributes. The market urge for healthy product and quinoa's high nutritional quality of seeds, and particularly close to ideal amino acid balance of its protein, gained popularity over the last 30 years. As for agriculture, its adaptation to marginal environment and high prices made it a suitable candidate for those looking for new crops. Interest in the crop had grown firm and steady and drawn the attentions of countries and international organizations. This process accelerated rapidly in the 21st century and currently there are more than 100 countries working with quinoa. Quinoa production area and volume increased exponentially since the beginning of the 21st century. A similar process can be observed as for scientific papers. As for the physiological standpoint, most papers are related to water deficit and salinity responses. Quinoa originates in two contrasting types of environments high altitude, low latitude ones, from southern Colombia to northwest Argentina and northern Chile in the central Andes, and low altitude, high latitude ones, from central to southern Chile. The central Andes have monsoon climates with rains during the summer. Here, the main risks for the cross are frost and dry spells during the whole cycle. In the center of Chile, the climate is Mediterranean, with rains from autumn to spring. Here, the main risk is terminal lack of water, which is called a terminal drought. In the south of Chile, the climate is temperate humid, and rain is not a limitation. In fact, in this climate, some of the highest yield in the world are obtained. For example, up to ton, 20 tons for wheat, and 10 tons for quinoa. The southern highlands include part of the south of Bolivia, northwest of Argentina, and northern Chile. They have the coldest and driest environment for quinoa production. However, here is where still most quinoa is grown. The northern highlands are in the border between Bolivia and Peru. They are still highland environments, but the rains are higher and the conditions are better. The inter-Andean valleys go from southern Colombia to northwest Argentina. They have a lower altitude from two to three thousand meters. So here frost risk is lower, precipitation is higher, and conditions are still better. Finally, as seen in this photo, the lowlands environments in the center of Chile have precipitation going from 400 millimeters a year near Santiago, the capital city, to Chile where rainfall can be up to 2,000 millimeters per year. Matching the crop cycle duration to environmental restriction is called crop adaptation and is the first requirement in order to grow a new species in new environment. In species like soybean, this adaptation is linked to maturity groups. Each one is adapted to a range of latitude. Soybean is a short day plant, meaning that time to flowering and maturity is reduced under short days. In that sense, quinoa is similar to soybean. In an international quinoa test between 1998 and 1999, 24 genotypes from different countries and environments were evaluated simultaneously in several agronomic environments. Four genetic groups were identified showing contrasting performance. 
These genotype groups are associated to strong genotype by environment interaction. In other words, changes in the relative performance across environments. In this principal component analysis chart, what is shown is the different environments as arrows and the different genotypes within each genetic group as symbols. The perpendicular projection of each genotype on one particular environment arrow indicates its relative yield performance and show how contrasting these responses can be. There is hidden information in the two previous slides. In tropical environments, all 24 genotypes set seeds and mature. However, were grown in higher latitudes, only those from sea level environments were able to mature. One factor behind this is photoperiod. Seed set is inhibited under long days in quinoa. An example of this is shown in this photo. From left to right, plants were exposed to natural photoperiods in Buenos Aires. In the second plant to the right, what is shown is a plant in which photoperiods were extended after flowering. And finally, the third plant shows a situation where photoperiods were extended earlier in reproductive development. Here, seed filling was fully inhibited. An example of how farmers manipulated environmental sensitivity in quinoa is shown here for northwest Argentina. The transect shows the range of altitudes explored by the crop, and this is associated to four genetic groups identified using microsatellite markets and shown in this map. Higher altitudes are associated to shorter times to flowering, and this is associated to shorter growing cycles. These changes in time to flowering are associated to a decrease in photoperiod sensitivity. Plants from higher altitudes have lower photoperiod sensitivity, and those from lower altitudes have higher photoperiod sensitivity. Some genotypes do not have the typical short day response, what could be of interest for Mediterranean environment and Northern Europe. These long day plants flower earlier the longer the days, in a similar way to crops as wheat or barley domesticated in the Middle East. Finally, temperature is also an important factor in the control of developmental rate. There is a variation between the four genetic groups. The sea level type accelerated development faster than the Andean Valley type as temperature increases. Therefore, the sea level type has a shorter cycle under similar condition. Temperature also affects agronomic performance. Plants of two different genotypes were exposed to a range of daily temperatures. For that from the Andes, yield decreases in relation to higher temperatures, while the opposite happens to a sea level genotypes. As for genetic resources, quinoa genetic variability is preserved in germoplasm collections. Bolivia and Peru have the biggest one but we can also find a significant collection in Ecuador, Argentina and Chile. Countries like Germany, China or Saudi Arabia count with a new collection, some with thousands of accessions. Additional genetic resources are found in wild species that are interfertile with quinoa. The crop is part of a group of allotetraploids distributed from Alaska to Patagonia and have two genomes, A and B, one of which is shared with the Eurasian wheat Canopodium album. Those allotetraploid species are found in the American continent and are all related. 
In South America, they include quinoa and canopodium ursinum, regarded as quinoa's wild ancestor. In North America, it includes canopodium berlandieri and is divided into two subspecies, one wild and one cultivated, known as huasontle in Mexico. What have these wild species have to offer? This density plot show the frequency distribution of collection environments for quinoa for the whole species range and for Canopodium ursinum from Argentina. When looking at maximum temperatures during the crop cycle data, what is seen is that Canopodium ursinum explores much higher temperatures than quinoa, while for precipitation the data overlaps. This suggests that Canopodium ursinum could be a source of traits for adaptation to high temperatures, not found in the cultivated species. Nowadays, we count with considerable information of quinoa's genetic structure and the environmental factors conditioning its adaptation. Still, there is much to be done and the search for new traits conferring adaptation to climate change and new environments is still at its very beginning. <laughs>